Hi everyone, in this uh, quick video I'm going to show you how to deal with velocities in TyFlow. It can sometimes be a bit confusing. So I'm going to show you three ways of transferring velocities from a mesh to your particles. So in the first example, as you can see, I have like this animated character. So it's a skin character from Mixamo. I'm going to open a new TyFlow and uh, start building a very basic setup. So I can start with a burst operator at frame zero. All right. The particles on my character. I can maybe increase the size and change the color. All right. Now, usually, if you want your particles to follow an animated geometry, you will go for an object bind operator. You can select the character and lock the particles on the geometry. All right. Now you can see that my particles are moving, but if I check the velocity, we have a velocity equal to zero. So in that uh, kind of situation, to retrieve the velocity, you might want to check the verlet integration. I can display the vector. And we can see that it's properly computing the velocity. So most of the time it's uh, good enough. But there are two main issues to the default solution. The first one being, when you spawn the particles, you don't have the velocity. If I spawn them at frame 10, you will see that we have no velocity. The reason is, it's using a valid integration. Since there is no previous frame to compare to, it can't compute the velocity on the first frame. And the second reason is that sometimes you don't want to use an object bind. You can have some particles around your character, meaning not being attached to the geometry, and still want to get the velocity of this object. And there is simply no way to do that with the object bind. So I'm going to show you different methods to address these issues. In these kind of situations where you have a mesh that is animated with a constant topology, you might want to simply use a script operator. So don't panic, <laughs> it's not going to be complicated. You will see that we can do it in one line of code. So you can add a script and jump into its editor. You can uncomment everything and simply remove everything except the first uh, variable. All right. So if we check the API and look for the description of uh, the TF object, we can see that uh, we have access to some functions. And the one we're going to use is this one, get closest vel, uh, which um, simply allows us to get the velocity on the mesh. We can copy it and past it. All right. So in order to access to this object, we need to add it first to the script accessible object rollout. All right. And we can see that is being referenced as obg001. So we can simply write it like that. obg001 dot. And for the position, we need the particles. So we can simply retrieve the position of our particles using this function. And if we evaluate the script, we can see that it's working. OK, now that we have retrieved the velocity of the closest point on the mesh, we can apply it to our particles using this simple function set vel. The first argument is the particle index and the second argument will be this one. So don't forget to close the line 
and you can check it by evaluating the script it should be good okay we can pick again our character and we can display the vectors and we can see that it's uh, working all right of course it's working with the object bind so i can activate it and the particles will be locked and even without the valet integration it should work simply make sure to put the script after the object bind and you should get the velocity if you really don't want to use the script there is another solution which consists of using the surface force operator can add my object and by default it has an attraction force that i'm gonna put to zero if we go down under the motion rollout uh, we can see that we can uh, use the object's motion if i put it to 100 percent i will retrieve the velocity of my character so it's the exact same thing remember also that the surface force will work in additive mode which means it will add at each step the velocity to the current value if you don't use an object bind as you can see it can be a bit explosive because um, as i said it uh, will add the velocity to the previous velocity so in order to avoid that if you don't use an object bind you can simply use a stop and set its timing to continuous all right so this method the script and the surface force are working as long as you have a consistent topology which is the case here but if you are dealing with a mesh that has a non-consistent topology for example if i add an optimized modifier here as you can see we don't have the same number of vertex each frame as you can see it's not working anymore so in that case you might want to use another solution which is the tie vertex velocity so it's a modifier that comes with tie flow if you try to show the vectors in the viewport you will see that it return an error saying that uh, the face count is um, is not consistent over the timeline so it has different modes and if we switch to the proximity mode you can see that it's trying to interpolate now how do we transfer that velocity that has been extracted if you look closely you will see an option that will um, allow us to save the velocity into a map channel so let's do that and uh, in tie flow if i remove the previous operators we don't need them anymore i can activate my tie flow and go to the frame where the particles are emitted all right so the easiest way to do it is to use a mapping operator and we can pick our character so by default you will retrieve every map channels so we don't have to change anything here i can add now a custom properties operator and under the a vector data rollout i have access to different kind of um, vector channels and the ones we are looking for are the mapping channels so as you can see we only have access to map channel until five so we can select it and make sure to adjust this value in the tie vertex velocity as well all right and we can name that channel maybe extracted velocity I can add another custom properties and this time I'm not gonna save any value I'm gonna load the value we just created into the velocity channel so it's already working as you can see make sure to set all these operators timings to continuous 
so it will work over time. And now, as you can see, it's working. Same as before, if you want to use an object bind and to attach your particles on your geometry, you can use it. Just make sure to put it before the whole set of operations. You have access here to a multiplier, which means you can increase the velocity. And um, the only thing you need to be careful about when using this method is the rotation of your input object. Here, my character has um, no rotation, as you can see. So the velocity is computed properly, but in some case you might have a rotation and even if you don't see it on the object because it's a skinned character, it will affect the direction of your velocity. So in most cases, I will assume that uh, it's possible to simply cancel that rotation in order to retrieve a correct uh, result. But if you can't and if your object has a rotation and you have to deal with it, the only way to adjust it is to compensate that rotation directly into die flow through the script operator once again. So what we're gonna do here is um, get rid of these two custom properties and replace them with a script operator. All right, so I can jump into my editor and command this block and same as before, remove everything except the first line. So in order to compensate that rotation, we need first to get uh, the actual rotation of this object. So to do that, we need to access this object here. And um, the same way we did before, we need to add it to the script accessible object. And once again, we can check the API. And here we can see that we have access to some of its uh, properties. So we could get the rotation as a quaternion, but um, in my opinion, it's easier to deal with a matrix because we have already some uh, handy functions implemented in the API. So uh, let's uh, copy that line. All right. And outside of the loop here, I'm going to construct my first variable, which is uh, my matrix tree. I'm going to call it rotation matrix. And uh, same as before, I'm going to look for this object. So obg001 dot get tm and now that i have this rotation i can uh, get the data created by the tie vertex velocity that i um, retrieved through the mapping operator velocity i want to get here the map channel 5 and i want to compensate that uh, velocity with the rotation so once again if we check into the api under the matrix description here it is we have this function that fits perfectly what we need so can copy it create a new variable and apply this method this function to my rotation and finally, I can uh, reassign my velocity, my adjusted velocity to my particles. Now, if I try that script, it should work. So for now, I don't have any rotation to my object, but for example, if I had a 90 degrees rotation, we can see that it's no longer affecting my vectors because it's uh, been compensated, all right? So if you want to increase that velocity, you can either go to a speed, set its timing to continuous, inert previous. Or you could uh, create your own access in the script, for example, with a float multiplier. All right, and you don't need any of this. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. 
if you have any questions don't hesitate to ask in the comments i will uh, try to answer and um, the files will be on my github the link will be in the description so see you